What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Luzanak. It's episode number 18 of The Climb and well today we have the season number 3 youth intake. A very exciting time to be had. What is slightly less exciting is what is on your screen right now because Harris El Mutaki has broken his ankle. Yes, one of our star players, a player who to be fair this year didn't perhaps kick on as you'd hope uh, after a tricky year last year of course was the star of the show season 1. But, um, well, his, his season's over. He's broken his ankle. He's out till at the very earliest, early July. The chances are he could even miss the start of next season, which is a little bit of a shame. One small silver lining, I suppose, is the fact that Stefano Zobo, who, of course, we've got on loan from Toulouse at the moment, has got a pre-contract agreement. And at the end of his contract with Toulouse, which expires at the end of this year, he's going to be joining us on a free transfer on, I believe, £600 a week. Don't quote me on that. My memory is fuzzy. I think it's £600, it may be £700. Either way, he's been a really important part of the team this year. Seven goals, three assists, and obviously fantastic news to have him tied down. And while we already discussed the youth intake, it's worth talking about the youth candidates and who's doing well and who looks good. And well, there's one man that stands out above all the rest. It is Gem Jeremy... Bavarel, um, yeah, not a bad little centre mid. You can see here some very good current ability. We are currently in the con in the process, I suppose, of getting that contract sorted out. Uh, but unfortunately, with him being 15, he is not going to be eligible to play until, uh, well, the November. November, that's a long way away, isn't it? Um, elsewhere with the youth intake, we had some very, very good players come through. You can see here we've got Dimitri Cordier, um, a good little fullback, perhaps lacking a little bit of the current ability. Of course, since last year's intake with uh, Blaze coming in, we have upgraded the facilities in terms of the junior coaching. We have also upgraded uh, the youth recruitment again. So there has been that continued improvement in those areas. Um, you can see if we just sort by potential ability, there is plenty of potential in our ranks besides the two players we've just mentioned. Uh, Oliver Banza, perhaps the other player worth keeping an eye on, but... Well, it's obviously, of course, worth noting that the stars are relative to the team that you're at right now. So these players aren't all going to become world class, unfortunately. But nevertheless, they look like they're going to become very, very good. And uh, well, yeah, it's a good little team today. So anyway, since we last here, we have played some fixtures. If we just take a quick peek at them, of course, last episode we took on US St. Malo. And uh, well, since then, we've played five matches in all competitions. And by our own standards, not particularly good form by any means. Two wins, two draws and a defeat. The first win was against Tor. Uh, this was a crazy game. Uh, all the goals just came as a big influx in the first half. In fact, we were 3-0 up after 16 minutes. Manan got the first, big dub, and then Julian Blaze getting a goal. Good to see Julian continuing to find that goal scoring form ever since he's found and signed that new contract uh his kind of overall composure it feels like it's leveled out i don't know i can't really describe it it's suddenly like he's, he now realizes he's a professional footballer i suppose and that he needs to be scoring goals he did that in this game he looked like a threat whenever he was going forward stefane zobo got one just before half time in the 46th minute they got a consolation in the second half we don't need to see that 4-1 it finished a good result Following on from that, we couldn't really kick on though. Uh, taking on Ruan, we drew 1-1. Uh, we conceded in the first minute. Not ideal. Uh, Idi with the goal, and well, he was not the only Idi on the pitch because Blaze is a bloody idiot. He got sent off in the 22nd minute, a man down, a goal down. Despite that, as you can see by the stats in the bottom left, we fought hard. Sega Kieta got a goal, 1-1 it finished. A point earned rather than three points or two points lost, I suppose, is the main thing here. But yeah, Julian Blaze getting sent off in this game, just showing that competitive streak that he has, that, that little bit of him that's a bit of a dark side, the part that wants to break the rules, you naughty, naughty boy. Please don't do that for us, because it makes things difficult to get wins. And, well, obviously, we didn't win that game. The good news is we did win one of the game in this run of results. It was against Brest, a 3-1 win in this one. And, uh, well, with Blaze out suspended and a few injuries, including the injury to El Mutaki, rotation was needed. Cyprian David came in for us, a player who you may remember from our first ever youth intake. Great to see him get involved, getting his second and first goals of the season. He scored one early on. They scored in the 11th minute. Uh, worth noting that Mamadi Bangre got a goal in the 31st minute of course the player we discussed the possibility of signing last episode and then David got a goal from the penalty spot to make it 3-1 to tie 
uh, well, to, to not tie this up, to wrap this game up, to tie it up, I don't know, you can't tie up a fixture, that makes it sound like you're drawing it, to, to wrap the game up, he wrapped it up in a big package, Mavadi Bangre got a goal, and uh, yeah, he's joined us, as I talked about last episode, I wanted to bring him in, just because I felt like he could offer us a little bit of pace, a little bit of excitement, a young player with a little bit of potential perhaps to offer, formerly of course of Toulouse, and you can see here at 20 years old, he looks like a relatively solid player, and uh, well, a goal in this game was good, and David... He deserves his own little mention. Two goals in this game on, well, his first real appearance this year where he's had an impact. He's had a few chances in the team without really shining. Of course, he got a goal in his very first season with the club when he first generated. Last season, I just didn't ever find an opportunity for him. This year, he's in continued to improve as a player. As you can see here, his recent development has been largely positive. And in the end, uh, yeah, he's kind of shown that improvement on the pitch, I suppose. So anyway, two more games to go through. Vans, OC, we drew 0-0 against. It was boring, it was awful, it was bland. And then we took on Can, and we lost 1-0. Um, a scrappy goal, a rebound that, well, I don't know if you could blame Gibert, really. He made a superb initial stop, couldn't, couldn't stop it from completely going in. But as you can perhaps imagine, with only two wins in the last five games, we have... Fallen off the pace just a little bit. Ren are very, very good as it turns out. Uh, they are seven points ahead of us. You can see here Brest and Cannes, second teams, then hot in pursuit. And then it's actually Villafranche, who are currently sit six points behind us. So a good opportunity here to pull away from them perhaps a little further. St. Malo have had an awful run of form. It's really looking like it's a two-horse race now. And with six points clear... Uh, well, with us being six points clear of Villafranche, you would back us now to be the team to extend that lead at the top. That is kind of what we are going to be striving towards today. So anyway, we're going into today's game. We are going to be taking on Chatres Football. Uh, that's definitely not how you say it, but I try. And uh, well, in terms of the team for today's game, this is the team. We've got Blaze, Big Dub and Zobo alongside Manan. The four Musketeers. I know there were three of them in Luzanac's Musketeers. We, ha we have a quartet, or should I say a quintet? Because there's one more player who came through the youth intake that I've not shown you yet. Dramatic reveal music, please. Coffee. Coffee, coffee, coffee. I love my coffee. My friendship's been ended with Julian Blaze. Coffee is my new best friend now. I don't even like coffee. In the drink. The, I like this guy. Um, he's nuts. He is a brand new player. Came through the youth intake. He is the pick of the bunch. He is the, the creme de la creme. One of the best players I've seen in a youth intake for me this year. If you've been watching the live streams with Monopoly, you'll know how awful some of our intakes have been. But this guy is nuts. And if we just compare him to Julian Blaze, because I feel like that's the best way to compare them, um, he's better. He's better. He's a, he's a year younger and he's just better. In fact, there's not a great deal of difference in their ages. Only two months because Coffee was quite old for his age group. But yeah, really exciting option. Another exciting striker who has the ability to play in the wide attacking mid positions. I'm already seeing a future with Julian Blaze and Coffee playing alongside each other, potentially on either wing or maybe with one of them up top. To start today's game, we're going to have him on the bench. He could make his debut because Youth Intake Day was only four days ago. And fortuitously for us, he generated at the age of 16. So he's of age to play. Driven personality, 18 determination, fantastic first touch and technique. He just looks really good, and he's super consistent, which you absolutely love to see. That is the, the big thing for me. You can have an amazing player. If they're inconsistent, I'm always a little bit nervy. This guy has it all. Coffee. You're going to get a hat trick when we bring you on at half time. I'm ready. I'm excited. Um, the rest of the team kind of picks itself. It's it's fairly standard. Gibert in goal, Enzo at left back. Uh, Billingy, who of course has continued uh, his form at right back, is doing well. He's been left out of the Congo national team as of late, though. I feel like as his guardian and parent figure, I should write an angry letter to their FA discussing the fact he's been dropped from the team. Hopefully he finds himself back in contention sooner rather than later. Robert and Scadato at centre-back. or Yeah, at centre-back. Barane Barr back in the team alongside Marin. Of course, Barr had that injury earlier on in the year. And the front four we've already talked about, but Zobo now joining us permanently makes me feel pretty good about things. I feel like we have a, a, a real kind of solid foothold here in terms of an attacking force going into next year. I'm already thinking ahead to next year, but no, seriously, Manan has been absolutely insane. Eight goals to his name. zoppo has been chipping in with goals. Big Dub has shown some really promising signs of development, as you can see here. And um, I don't know, things are looking bright. The future is looking rosy. 
and hopefully it's going to be looking even more rosy after this game here. You can see we are playing at home. Uh, as for Villafranche, they are taking on Cannes' second team, who, if I'm not mistaken, are one place above them in the league. If they were to lose that game and we win this one, suddenly we're nine points clear at the top, and then I will start to dream of promotion. Of course, when I say nine points clear at the top, I'm just ignoring all the second teams. They don't matter. They're not promotional rivals. As long as we finish ahead of the teams that can be promoted... That's all that really matters. And I think part of the reason for saying that is that with the recent form, um, we have fallen way off the pace of Wren, who I think are at 9 or 11 points clear at the top. They, they're, they're out of sight. They're out of mind. I'm not trying to think too much about the, the title that we potentially lost in the end. Promotion was the aim this year. And promotion we look like we're going to get. So hopefully that is going to be the case here today. Uh, well, I say today, like we can earn it today. There's still a lot of the season left. It was only the halfway mark last episode. I think there's still nine or ten games left after today's fixtures today. So, yeah, don't, don't think the job is done. Don't think that we are all Gucci right now. There is plenty more that we need to get done here. And, well, hopefully we're going to do it as they are patiently building up the play early on. It's whipped in and they've scored after two minutes. It's not ideal. I was hoping that we were going to show a bit of flair today. I've got my football manager Trek Quartista shirt on. Maybe I need to start playing with a Trek Quartista. I was hoping for flair. I was hoping for excitement. Show coffee what Luzanak are all about. Instead, he sat on the bench thinking, do I really have to come on and show these chums how, to, how it's done? I mean, coffee, you might want to go get warmed up, mate. Go go get what We'll put the kettle on. We'll put... Get, get it. Coffee. Okay, move, move on. I hadn't thought of that before I hit start record, I promise you. That was on the fly. <laughs> Gosh, imagine if I thought about my puns, it'd be even more concerning. We've got a penalty here. It's going to be Barane Bart, I imagine, over it. This is his duty. We don't really have a great penalty taker in the team, but Barane Bart, for the most part, has been consistent. Of course, now he will probably miss this one. Well, the football manager gods have been nice today. He's got the goal for goal of the season for him. We'll take that. 1-1 one, one after three and a half minutes. I hope you've packed a packed lunch for today's episode, because this could be a long one, <laughs> based on what we've seen so far. After four minutes, um, in game time, we probably spent four minutes watching the match. Although, after ten minutes now, it has all slowed down. And, well, the cascading amount of goals has just kind of ceased, which is a shame. The flow has stopped. Although, it could get kick-started again here. Fifteen minutes gone. We're building from the back. Enzo to Blaze. Back to Enzo. Lumps it forward. He's looking for Manar. Manar's there. Can he finish it? He can't. He was offside. It wouldn't have counted. Why show me that highlight? Why give me the hope of a possible one-on-one -on -one being scored in Football Manager 2020 when even if it had gone in, my excitement would have been short-lived? Why do that to me, game? Anyway, we've got another chance here. Blaze whipping it in, headed away. Where's Hugo Robert when you need him? Barane Bar, Manan, 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 Manan. Edwin, you beautiful man. Man Man Manan's called Edwin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's never going to get old. Please help me. He scored 10th goal of the season for him, hitting double figures. A really big achievement for a player who joined kind of not even at the start of the season. Didn't get a proper pre-season with the team. Thrown in at the deep end, but to be fair, he has swum like a fish to the top. He's risen like cream. Those are two analogies that don't really work together, are they? We need to do some defending, boys. Ignore my ramblings from the sideline. 2-1. They've got the ball. What can we do? We've got lots of men crowded in the middle here. I mean, surely one of you is going to put in a tackle. If we win the ball here, we could launch a mighty fine counter-attack. And while the ball is gifted to Enzo, Robert launches it forward. Manan down to Blaze. Julian, Julian, you beautiful French man. What can you do? He cuts... Where's he going? Julian? Ju Just pass it, you wazzock. <laughs> Enzo now with it. I don't know why I thought he was just going to run through them all. It was going to be a Mar Maradona-esque goal. Unfortunately, it's... It's screaming a little bit of Charlie Adam out on the wing, isn't it, with what he's doing right now. Blaze, have another go. Whips in the ball this time. Falls to Marin. Oh, my word. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for the goalkeeper. Hold your hands up and apologise. Marin's doing a blooming roly-poly in celebration about that goal. Talk about rubbing it in. Absolutely no chill from the Luzanak Academy graduate. Blaze playing the ball across to him, and he just swacks it in. But it's not his goal. It is an own goal. You've not hit the target, Marin. I love the fact he's gone away and done like a roly-poly and celebrated like it was his thing to enjoy. I feel bad for the keeper there. I really do. It's just hit him on the back. It's so unfortunate. 3-1 up, bit of breathing room, but they've had chances and a lot of the highlights have started in our half, which I best I guess could be viewed as us hitting them on the break like this, but we are being tested defensively. They've had a few shots. It's a shame that Manan couldn't score that. 
just to make it a little bit more comfortable. But I don't know. 3-1. 4-1 and we would really start to relax, I think. But still plenty of football still to be played here. And we can't get too complacent just yet. Brane Bar to Enzo. Enzo's had a lot of joy down this left-hand side. We've been able to switch the play quite nicely today, quite quickly. They look quite compact and narrow defensively. Loads of space for the wing-backs to exploit and the wide attackers. Bellingi whips in, Blaze heads narrowly over. 3-1, and is it mad to say that before half-time I'm considering bringing in coffee? Would that be disrespectful to the opposition? Maybe a little bit. I'm going to do it at half-time. I've had enough of this. It's 3-1. Unleash the coffee. The kettle's boiled. The kettle has boiled. Big dub. Manon can actually play advanced playmaker. He's not particularly great at it, but we're going to take him uh, and drop him back. He's been playing too well to drop. Big dub's been a little bit quiet today, bless him. He can he can have a, a bit of a rest. And coffee. Coffee. This is your moment, my friend. You've been, you've been born and raised on this planet for 16 Earths. For 16 Earths? For 16 years. I can't English. Um, with the hope and dream that you will become the star striker of Luzanak. Go out there, make the difference, do it for me, Coffee. I will say, today's commentary feels like it's been a bit all over the place. If you can't tell, it's one in the morning for me. I thought that with me going full-time, the, the days of doing late-night recordings would be long behind me, but I streamed for five hours today. If you were in the stream, thank you for watching. If you don't know about the stream, shameless plug now, why not do it? Twitch.tv forward slash work the space. We're live every single weekday. As Billingley does some defending, he's alive every single weekday. He's always alive to the fret. Zobo, inside to Marin. I'm a little bit concerned that with Zobo, you know, he's impressed. He's got a senior deal now. He isn't going to need to worry about anything. Coffee, coffee. Not how I imagined it. Not how I imagined his first highlight. I'll be honest. I was... Ah, what was that? What was it? What was that? Answers on a postcard. Coffee, do you know where the goal is, my friend? I've given you this big speech, we've bigged you up, and then you've done that to me. Zobo's been a bit quiet, let's bring in Sega Kieta. We'll hold one sub back, just in case of injury, but I don't know. 3-1, it's looked pretty convincing ever since we took got that second goal ahead. They've not had nearly enough chances. We dominate a possession in typical fashion. And against the team that we should be beating, a team lingering down in mid-table, we are going to get a win here. I have not noticed the Villa... I was about to say I've not noticed the Villa Fonche result. I've now seen it because as I look in the top left, it just happens to be there. They've won their game 3-1. So unfortunately, as they took on a second team and I was desperately hoping maybe we could create a little bit of breathing room, they maintain the gap to six points and with that, they jump back into fourth place and do continue that breathing down our necks with nine games left of the season. Anyway, in terms of next episode, I think we're going to come back and do uh, the game against Villefranche. Uh, maybe even double up the game against Wren ahead of some kind of end of season live com. I know we did both those games away from home. There is a possibility that we could easily, you know, confirm the title there and potentially lose out on. Well, I say loot, win the title, win promotion. I'm, the, the promotion is the title. Wren have won the league. Well done, Wren. I hope you're happy. Um, but no, there's a chance that we can maybe maintain the gap on them to dream of getting a trophy for winning it all but certainly against Villafranche we will be hoping that a promotion can be confirmed or at least you know take ourselves one step closer towards it and well hopefully I will see you guys for that very soon and by very soon I of course mean tomorrow anyway guys that's going to wrap up all from me today I hope you've enjoyed today's episode if there's anything you would like to see covered in tomorrow's episode that I perhaps not covered today please do let me know it down in the comments I always enjoy reading your comments your ideas your thoughts maybe it's a case of going through some of the training the staff members the board expectations all that jazz the dynamics whatever you want I'll cover it thumbs up comments of stuff that you would like to see if they're already down below I hope to see you guys again tomorrow drop a like if you've enjoyed and other than that it is me Jack I'm gonna go to bed I hope you've enjoyed the coffee and I'll see you guys very soon take care now <laughs>